Right, this is part seven, I think, and um, I'm going to try and be quick. I've got quite a lot to go through in this one. Well, kind of. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. I, I know I said last time I was going to do the touching up of the alert boxes and all that sort of stuff, but I don't think that's really important, and I think it would just be a waste of a video doing it. So I don't think I'm going to do that at all. I, th I might do it before I release the code. I might, um, I might do it all then, but I, d I don't know. I don't know if it's really worth it because it's not a design video, is it? So, anyway, this video, I've made quite a few changes. <coughs> Sorry, and the main thing I've added is a login in screen, create a user screen, and then when you uh, after you log in and you upload a tip, the tip is then linked to your ID. So I'm going to go through all that today and then in the next video I'll go through um, favouriting tips maybe or viewing just your own tips, I'm not too sure. But yeah, anyway. Right, so here's app.js. What I've changed here is before this would go to the startup module and it would load up that window but now it's going to this new login and it's calling this login user function so we'll go straight into that what this is is it's a login screen and do you know what it might be best if I just show you right so yeah here's the login screen this is the first screen that comes up now and what there is is a username and password field a login button then down here we've got create an account so if we type a wrong username and password it will say um, doesn't exist if we don't put anything in we'll get an alert saying no user or pass let me just put a wrong one in actually so just to check in same thing sorry user not found yet so yeah, so we've got that. So that's doing an, that's doing a call to the server, and it's uh, just doing a check on the database, and it's returning back um, zero or one, pretty much. And if it's zero, we know it's it's not in the database. If it's more than zero, then it does. Um, then we've got the create an account screen. I've wrote pick a username there, but I mean just ignore that. It doesn't really matter. Um, so what this does is you put your username and password in and you click create, it's got the same thing if you put a username that's already been used it will say sorry that username is in use so if I put Gary I don't know, just anything for that it's gonna say now sorry but that uh, name is in use yep because I've already created a user with the name of Gary so what I'll do now, sorry I've got hay fever if you can hear me sniffling and stuff, but I'll try not to do it. Yeah, so what I'll do now is I'll go through the code on login.js. Standard things that we've been doing, um, the window, we've got our two text fields here. You can add a property which is, um, I think it's set pass, password mask to true on a text field. And if you do that, then when you're typing in... Let me just show you. If you set it to true, then you won't see the characters like this. You know, like on a website when you're doing a login, you just see those little circles. You can do that. I I haven't done that, but you can add that parameter and it will do that. But yeah, anyway. So there we go. We've got the la the header label, which is the one at the top. The login label, this is our login button. Again, I've done it as a label, which I think I've done pretty much throughout. I think so. I don't know, but it's a label anyway, and that is this text. Then we've got the create label, which is the create button down the bottom. What we're doing again is the um, the same as when we add a tip. We've got that um, activity indicator. It's the same sort of thing as before. We're hiding it initially. We've got a focus event on a password field. Um, the reason I've got this is because, if you notice... When we're writing in the username field, the keyboard, where it comes up to, actually hides the password field. So now, 
the way I've done it where is if you focus in on the password field it pushes them both up so um, so you can actually type in it because if, if you don't do that then the, the keyboard actually covers that which is obviously useless I mean you should probably do it on this as well so it moves them both up initially but I've just done it on there just to show you that you, you can do it that's the main reason why I've laid it out like this to be honest is just to show you that little trick um, then we've got our event listener on the login button all it's doing is it's checking that there is a value in each field if there is you get into here put in the username and password in these variables and what we're doing is we're doing an API call to check the login credentials so what we're doing is with the mode is check user we're passing the username and password and this I don't know what's special I'll just show the PHP for that now I'll, I'll show the PHP for that now actually but um, comes back with the response text then what it does is on this login check which is the returned text from this call what we're doing here is we're checking if it's more than zero what I'll explain actually is why I've got this in a set timeout the reason I've got this in a set timeout I'm sure there's better ways again this is this is just how I do it if you don't have the set timeout then this login here it will be null or undefined if you do it instant if you because it's asynchronous it's it but yeah, it's done asynchronous I can't even say the word because it's done at the same time if you haven't got the timeout then it will still it this possibly won't have been returned by the time it's doing this so you put a set time out on it it could be like half a second if you want and that ensures that this variable is going to be valid and it's going to have the actual response.txt in it so yeah so that's the only reason for that what I'll do is I'll show you the I'll show you this 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 PHP now this. right so here's the PHP file so we're looking for check user oh one thing I will add actually is on an upload we are now passing the user ID and I'll show you how we're getting that we're getting that um, when the user actually logs in but I'll show you that in a sec but yeah so check user so we'll just put this it logs the user in so what this does is it gets the username and password does a query on the database and says um, select from our users table where the username and password equals that and then what we do is we do a num rows on the query and what that does is it just says how many how many results are there how many rows are there in our result I'm limiting it to one because there should never be more than one anyway but we're just doing this so really we're going to get zero or one then what I'm doing is we're getting the user ID from the query and we are doing this little check here for this result variable we're saying if num rows is greater than one then result equals the user id otherwise it equals zero and then that's what we're passing back so we're either going to pass zero or a user id and the user id will never be zero so it's zero or a number higher than zero so then that is why that is why in here we say is it greater than zero and if it is we know we've got a, a correct user so then what we do sorry so then what we do is we use this ti.app.properties set string and what this is this is like persistent data within the app so what we're doing is we're setting the user ID to um, the user ID basically the user ID of the current logged in user and and as I just said login check returns the actual user ID so we're setting that's where we're setting this string and I'll show you um, towards the end of the video how we're getting that string but yeah so then what we're doing we're doing our check that we had on the app JS before which is to call the startup function and then we're closing the window uh, here's the 
the else statements where if the user isn't found or if you haven't entered your username and password. Then we have the create label which is in the bottom left and what that does is when you click that it's going to open the create window for you to create a user. So let's go into that. So here's the create user pretty much quite identical to the login um, screen to be honest same sort of stuff but now da -da -da, where are we so now what we're doing is when they click see I've even I've still called it login label and it should be create label it's called login label here yeah so create of course that I should change that but I won't because it doesn't really matter right so here we are so if they have entered a username and password what we do is first we check the login credentials so what what I'm doing here is I'm checking I'm actually checking the username if the username is in use so here let me just show you right so here believe check user create yes yeah, so that's this one check user create and what we're doing is we're checking if the username is available so we connect to the database we get the username then we do a query on that username see if it exists and it's the same sort of thing as before getting the amount of rows then literally this time it's saying pardon me it's saying um, if num rows is more than zero then it's one or it's zero so literally it's one or zero on this and what we're saying here is got the set timeout again what we're saying here is if it's more than zero which means um, it's it, it there was a result and if there was a result that means that the username is in the database then we're simply going to alert that username is already in use if it wasn't in use then we're going to create the user so I've just got this alert and it just says create the user you can take this out this is just for reference so here we're doing another call and this is to create user and we're passing the username and password so that's this create user and on this one it's a bit different to the others we're using this here and what this is doing is this is getting the row ID of this of the, the this user really and then we're returning that so that is what would be in this response text and as you can see we've called the variable user ID so then we've got another set time out here I think it's just literally half a second and all it does is it says account created and closes the window actually we don't really need to return this here because this once the user is created it takes you back to the main screen so once you create a user this isn't really required because once you created a user you're going to go back to this screen anyway and then from there you will log in and when you log in it's going to get the user ID but oh well it, you might want to well, it's, well to be honest you may have your own um, you may have your own local database or, or some other function that you want to pass this ID to you might want to actually log the user in here so when you get to account created instead of closing the window you may want to go straight to the main screen and if you did want to do that then you could pass this user ID and you'd be able to crack on but anyway so yeah so we're going to close it which would take us back to the login screen so what I'm going to do now is I'll should I create an account I'll create an account so let's just call it I'll just call it test test so test test this should be successful account created so we've gone back so now we're at the login screen so we're going to log in as test test so now we've logged in as this new user what I'll do is I'll show you the um, user table now so here's the user table 
So you can see, um, I've just made this account, test, test. And if I upload a tip while I'm logged in as this user, the ID will be 5 in the user ID. So I'll do that in a sec and I'll show you it. Um, as you can see, I'm initially I was passing the email when I, f when I very first started these videos. But I haven't passed it when I'm creating the accounts, uh, just for ease of of use, not of use, but of of creating the video. You could have as many um, text fields as you want in that create account and account screen, and you could have all of that here. But for simplicity, I've just done username and password, just to get it all going quick. And wasn't you don't want to watch me type in loads of fields. So right, so um. What I'll do now, actually, is I'll I'll add a tip as this user. So let's say um, tip created on video. Um, this is a test tip from the new user. Let's just use um, any of these. I haven't used that one before. Let's just use that. So it's uploading the tip. Success. So go back. Latest, you'll see that tip here. See these are the ones I was testing with earlier. Right. So now if we go to the so now what we'll see is the tip we've just added is the user ID is five, which is correct. Tip created on video. This is a test tip from the new user. And that's what we want. So actually, I haven't added a log out button, but it would log you out when you close the app. But yeah, I should add a log out button. I'll probably add it down here or something. I mean, it's not too important for what we're doing. So how long was that? 70 minutes, that's wrong. So I think, I was, oh, okay, a couple more things. In the adder tip, where is it? In the added tip, I'm now getting the user ID. And I mentioned it earlier, we're setting the string in, uh, we're setting the app property when the user logs in. And we're calling it user ID, and the value is the ID. So then when we add a tip, if you remember, we pass the image, the title, the tip, but now I've added this line here. And what we're doing is just calling it UID and we're doing ti.app.properties get string user ID and we're passing that then to the server. And that is this here, this user ID. So yeah, so that's how you so that's how you create accounts and and set app properties. I don't think we've even mentioned that before, but yeah, so Pretty good, I hope that's helpful. But what I'm going to do in the next one is I'll do something where you, I think what I'll do is I'll do something where when you log in, in the My Tip screen, it will literally just show your tips. I think, I think, yeah, I think so. And then also, so that's what I'll do in the next video. Then in the one after that, I'll, I think I'll remove that help button at the bottom because I don't think there's any, there's not much point for that at the minute really, just adding some text in there. What I think is I'll put um, a favourite tips button and what we'll add is we'll add a little star on um, each of the tips and if you click that star then it gets added to your favourite tip screen. I think that could be quite helpful. So yeah, so we'll do that. Um, yeah, should be pretty easy. Right.